Coming up on today's show, a young lady that traveled over 8,000 miles to be part of the services at Grace Cathedral shares the wonderful miracles that God has performed in her life. I had been diagnosed with a condition um, which many may know as bipolar disorder. It affected my studies and um, it, w it made it very difficult for me to, to get through college. There's no cure to mankind for this condition and um, I just didn't want to be taking medication for the rest of my life. I just I just knew that there was deliverance in the Lord for that. Friend, there's nothing like the power of God. It can set you free no matter where you are in this world. Stay with us. You don't want to miss this episode of Our Grace Family starting now. Welcome to Our Grace Family. Thank you for joining us. I'm Reverend Steve Millar, a minister here at Grace Cathedral, and this is my lovely wife, Kathy. On today's program, we have a special guest who traveled all the way from South Africa to be with us. Welcome to the program, Natasha. We're so happy to have you with us today. Thank you for having me today, Reverend Millar and Kathy. And it's not very often that we have one of our members from uh, Grace Cathedral with us from another country. So this is a treat for us. And you traveled all the way from South Africa. Right. And we want to get a little bit of background uh, from you as to what your life was like in South Africa uh, in the Lord. Right. So um, when I was uh, a little girl, I was around about uh, seven, seven years old. Um, I, I really had a love for the Lord as a little girl. And I believe that's when the Lord had marked my life. Um, for him. Um, he put a love in my heart for him and um, he put a love for souls at that time. I didn't rightly know, but the Lord um, had put his love in my heart for others too. Yeah. And you had an innocence about you and a faith, a childlike faith that right. you just believed. I just believed. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, when we were talking earlier, you said that you lived on a farm? Right, River Millar. I lived on a farm. I grew up on a farm. Um, and when I was a little girl, um, on our farm, we would have Christian camps and uh, people would come out and have children come out to the farm. And that's where, when I um, had a, a wonderful experience as a little girl, um, when I came to the Lord, even though I didn't grow up in the truth and I didn't know the truth, um, I believe that's when the Lord had marked me. And can you share that experience that you had? There was one particular evening um, when we were invited to go to a wooden cross and there were rocks packed around that cross and all the children were invited to go and lay down their sins at that cross. And um, I was so sincere. I had tears in my eyes, even just as a little girl. Um, and that, I believe that, you know, that the Lord had marked my life at that time and, and he filled me with such a love. I went away and uh, I went home and I just had this love. I had all of a sudden had this love for other people and I just wanted to share the love of Jesus. <laughs> and now being here, I know what it's all about. So you yeah. really did get a born again experience right. at a young I believe age. so, yeah. I believe so. So you went down to that a uh, little wooden cross and laid your sins there at the foot of the cross. <laughs> right. So right after that, you know, after that experience, um, because the Lord had put his love in my heart for souls, even as a little girl, I would, I took the time, I took these little sticky notes and I wrote, Jesus loves you, Jesus <laughs> loves you. <laughs> and I got on the motorbike and I would drive around the farm and I would hand these sticky notes out to different individuals. But only later on, I came to realize that, you know, it was the Lord who, who did that and who put his love. So the he workers that were working on the farm, right. you know, you just go around and tell right. them that Jesus loves you. I just wanted you. to share Jesus. That's so mm -hmm. precious. I just <laughs> wanted to share him. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened later on in life for you? 
So later on in life, um, I had, um, you know, I went to primary school and then high school. Um, later on in high school is when I was introduced to the ministry um, where I met my little shepherd who uh, led me to become a part of Grace Cathedral. Can you tell us a little bit more about that story? Right. How did you end up meeting? So um, we were in the beginning of um, high school. Um, her and I were roommates at the time. And so you were going to a boarding school. We were then. going to a boarding school together and we shared, we shared a room. And um, in the final years of high school, we shared, because there was a time in the beginning of high school, we shared a room. And then there was a time that we weren't roommates, but later on we were roommates again. And I believe the Lord had a hand in that in bringing us together because she had introduced me you know, to Reverend Angley and, you know, this uh, Grace Cathedral. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was that like when she was introducing uh, the ministry to you? So she told me about um, Jesus, you know, and that you had to live free from sin. She told me about the Holy Ghost baptism. And that's where I had my first experience with the Holy Ghost baptism. I went all the way through. You went all the way through and received the Holy Ghost. Right. So when she was telling you about living free from sin, did mm -hmm. that seem foreign to you? I did not grow up in the truth. So I didn't, uh, you know, know about that. I didn't know about the Holy Ghost. I didn't know you had to live free from sin, but I openly accepted it. But you also saw probably the fruits in her life. Right, I saw a difference. Right. In her life, so you knew that it was possible right. to live yes. free from sin. Because right. a lot of people are like, well, how do you live free from sin? Yeah. But you were seeing that from, I was seeing from that. your little shepherd, which is someone who invites you to church. Right. And that's Tabitha. And um, what's unique about your stories, she was raised in Zimbabwe, I believe. And, but she ended up going to the same boarding school as you. Right. So we know that had to have been the hand of God, sure. bringing you two together. Yeah, because sure you enough. were born in Zimbabwe. I was it, born in Zimbabwe. You lived there for how many years? I was there up until about the age of six. Okay. So, so it really doesn't matter where you are in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord has a way of bringing people together. Right. And it was meant for you two to be brought together so that she could shine the light mm -hmm. of the truth right. in your life that right. would help you later on. So you had the experience of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And what was that like for you? It is an experience that just goes beyond. Um, I experienced such a joy, such a love, such a peace. Everyone needs the Holy Ghost. Right. And it's unfortunate right. that many preachers aren't teaching their congregation that they need the Holy Ghost. And I right. think people don't realize that when you have all these burdens and the Holy Spirit is there for you to comfort you, to help you through your valley, maybe you're struggling mm -hmm. in your walk with the Lord and the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. You know, if you have him, yes. you know, he can comfort you. Jesus put that love in your heart, which you were able to share with, you know, the, the workers, but the Holy Spirit will let those fruits manifest. Yes. Right. The Holy right. Spirit is so important. And he doesn't only help you spiritually, he helps you physically, even with different tasks that you need to do. Yes. And I know that you, you yeah. received a great deliverance, but before we go into that, we're going to take a quick break. So friends, stay with us. You're going to want to hear this coming up. We'll be right back. I didn't nourish my relationship with the Lord as I had to. You know, I had spent time with the wrong people. I was doing the wrong things and temptation just got a hold of me. And unfortunately that affected me. Spending time with the wrong people, they affect your walk with the Lord. My name is Ricky Drake. I got tired of waking up every day looking for a fix, some way to entertain my, my habits 
and I just got sick and tired of it. I was lost in sin, lost my best friend. The voice told me, take a look, good look at yourself in the mirror, Ricky, and ask yourself, do you like what you see? And when I looked into that mirror, my kids did not deserve a father like that. I needed him, oh, I needed him. People were out there praying for me that I didn't know who was praying for me and got me to get into church. I finally reached out with a heart full of sin. And I received salvation. That big heavy burden was lifted off of me. God delivered me from drugs and alcohol. I got saved, I got Jesus in my heart. All I can think is Jesus for dying on the cross for me, for going all the way to Calvary for me. I got saved, I got really born again. If you're tired of living the way you're living, give your heart to Jesus, because Jesus will deliver you. I got saved, I got Jesus in my heart. If you're living a life of addiction and you can't get free, come to one of our services at Grace Cathedral or call the number on the screen and experience a life you never thought was possible. We're back with Natasha, and she shared with us how she received Jesus Christ into her heart. And on top of that, she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now she's gonna let us know about her great deliverance. Natasha, can you tell us a little bit about that? Right, so Reverend Laura and Kathy, when I went to college, um, I had been diagnosed with a condition um, of which many may know as bipolar disorder. So I had struggled with this condition. I was diagnosed with this condition early, uh, in my earlier years of college. So that really um, had, you know, I had struggled with my studies and all, but the Lord had brought me out of that in now, a mighty way. Now, mm -hmm. some people who may not know what bipolar is, can you give us kind of what you went through and what your symptoms were? So bipolar is, is a condition where, uh, you know, where you would go through different episodes of uh, a manic stage or a depressive stage. But this wouldn't be over short periods of time. This would be more over extended peri periods of time. And um, it would really be frustrating because, you know, there are times you can get easily irritable or depressed, you know, and that really affects your daily life if you think about it. Yeah, so you're just basically on an emotional roller coaster. Right. And I'm sure you were getting a lot done when you were in that manic phase, but when you went into that depressive state, you probably didn't get much accomplished and that really affected your studies, I'm sure. It affected my studies and um, it, w it made it very difficult for me to, to get through college. So how did the Lord help you? So I reached out to the Lord and he set me free from that. Um, you know, we believe in good doctors and good medicines. I just didn't want to be on medication for the rest of my life because there's no cure to mankind for this condition. And um, I just didn't want to be taking medication for the rest of my life. So you did take medication? I did take medication and, you know, it. I just, I just knew that there was deliverance in the Lord for that. And you received that deliverance. And some people, you know, when there's an incurable disease, they don't realize that there is hope there is through hope. the blood of Jesus Christ, that they can right. be delivered right. and set free. It doesn't matter what the condition is, whether it's mental or physical, you know, whether it's cancer or anything like that, the Lord can do it. Right. There's nothing too hard for our God. <laughs> and what did you go to school for? I went to college and I studied law okay. and the Lord had made a way for me to complete two law degrees. So you have two law degrees and right. when you were diagnosed, you were going through all this. Right. And, but God was helping you all the way. God was helping me all the way. Isn't God that wonderful? Me all and the way. Now, 
In college, though, you struggled spiritually, though. You had... I did, yes. Can you go into that? Um, so I was in and out with the Lord. Um, so I didn't take my walk with God seriously. And that led, of course, to different things. Um, I was bound with alcohol, drugs. I had spent time with the wrong people. And that, unfortunately, had... Um, you know, led me from going away from the Lord, being in and out. And, um, but the Lord had delivered me from, from that life that I had lived. But he delivered me from drugs, alcohol, you know, I would be in the clubs. But, you know, the Lord in his mighty hand had dealt with me so patiently and brought me out of all of that. And he had mercy on you. Right. I mean, you, you knew somewhat of the truth from your friend Tabitha, you know, sharing uh, the light of the truth with you. And, uh, but you really didn't have that firm foundation that you needed and that temptation drew you away. I didn't nourish my relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. as I had to. You know, I had spent time with the wrong people. I was doing the wrong things and temptation just got a hold of mm -hmm. me. and. Unfortunately, that affected me. Right. So you, were yeah. you doing your prayer time at all? or? I was not consistent, Reverend Millar. Um, I wasn't consistent and, you know, being spending time with the wrong people, mm -hmm. they affect your walk with the Lord. Now, I know when the Lord was drawing you back to Him, there was a special song that you listened to over and over again. Can you share with us what that is? <laughs> so that song um, is by Rocky Lother. And this, the name of the song is, You've Got to Move On. And during the time the Lord had really dealt with me about coming back to Him, um, I, I had listened to the radio, the, the, the online, the Ernest Angeli World Radio, while I was in my apartment, busy studying, preparing for tests and exams. And that song came on and it just touched my heart in such a mighty way, because I just, knew that the Lord was just telling me, move on, just don't look back. God delivered you, move on. You gotta move on. There are souls we gotta win. Amen. Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go ahead and play that song now. So friend, listen to this song and let it bless you and move for you in a great way. We gotta move on with Jesus' love. We gotta move on with the Father above. We gotta hold fast win the race we've got to share god's amazing grace we gotta move on we gotta move on we gotta move on with the lord we gotta move on we have souls we've gotta win we've got a harvest to bring in Keep your eyes on the Father and Son With the Holy Ghost work as one We gotta move on We gotta move on We gotta move on with the Lord We gotta move on We gotta move on with Jesus' love We've gotta move on with the Father above gotta hold fast to win the race we've got to share god's amazing grace we've got to move on we got to move on we got to move on with the lord we've got to move on don't be troubled in this life just stay holy in god's sight just another mile and we'll be done Doing God's will till Jesus comes We have souls we've got to win We've got a harvest to bring in Keep your eyes on the Father and Son With the Holy Ghost work as one We gotta move on with Jesus' love We gotta move on with the Father above We gotta hold fast We've got to share God's amazing grace. We gotta move on. We gotta move on. We gotta move on. We gotta move on with the Lord. We gotta move on. We've got.
gotta move on. Wonderful song by Rocky Lowther, and it's so true that you do have to move on. Right. I mean, souls are so important in this final hour. And Natasha, you were able to witness the souls too. Right, Reverend Millar. Um, the Lord had, after he had doubts with me about coming back to him, um, he had just helped me to just, you know, read the word and just spend time with him. And, you know, with that, he had helped me to be a witness to others because, you know, people had witnessed where I was at Mm -hmm. and where the Lord brought me to. Mm -hmm. And they could I, see the change in your life. Right. I mean, here you were clubbing and, and living in sin. And then when you went back to the Lord, all that changed. All now, that changed. you separated with a lot of your friends too. Right. I had to do that because, you know, it's, it's just, you have to do it. So the Lord had really helped me with that. And I wouldn't have finished my college degree had I not gotten right with God, so. Can you explain what you mean by that? So, because I had went away from the Lord, that of course had impacted my, my grades. I wasn't focusing the way I should have. And the enemy had tried to steal my miracle from me. And that had affected my, my college. Your miracle, you mean your bipolar? My bipolar deliverance, right. And so the, often when the Lord has uh, had dealt with me, you know, he's said, you have to mean business. If you want to finish this college degree, you have to mean business with me. And so I took the Lord seriously <laughs> and I let go of what I needed to let go of. And he miraculously turned things around because I was not going to finish. So you were on the verge of failing. I was on the verge of failing. Wow. But see God's mercy, he not only saved your soul, but he brought you out of that right. and restored your grades. Mm -hmm. And then you graduated with two degrees. Two degrees. <laughs> that's amazing. In law. In law. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Our God is good. And you know, for people who have the condition bipolar, it, a lot of people don't finish tasks. It's it's known for people with that condition to not be able to finish a certain task because of what they go through. But seeing all of this, I completed the journey because of what God made possible. Yes, that's a testimony within itself. Right. And I think about how, you know, you being all the way in South Africa, but God was still able to make you part of our Grace family, connected with us. Right. And how did the live streams help you? So Grace Cathedral is my church. <laughs> I tune into the live streams and it just makes a person feel a part of this ministry, you know, of, of the Grace Cathedral. And, you know, the love that flows from the, from the live streams. I've received different deliverances from the live streams. The Lord has moved for me mentally, you know, physically. The Lord has um, even moved for my loved ones. So, you know, even though I'm far away, I'm connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we love about having the live streams is that we are connected with people yes. throughout the world. Right. And you're an example of that. Mm -hmm. And I think about the different tools that we have, like you mentioned the world radio station that we have that runs 24 mm seven -hmm. and how that song affected you and helped bring you back to the Lord. and. Didn't you also hear a testimony um, on the radio that helped you? I did. I, I listened to the Ernest Angie World Radio and I, list, I was going through something at the time. I um, had struggled with, uh, with allergies and I had listened to someone's testimony on the radio and how, of how they had to fight and their testimony helped me mm -hmm. to reach out. So, you know, the radio is such a blessing as well as the live streams. Yes. God is so good and he's provided us with many tools. Well, we need to take another quick break here. So friends, stay with us. We have more to come. We're gonna be right back. John 8:36. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Do you feel there is no way out of your situation? In the natural, there's no way out. 
But God can make a way when there is no way. Are you sick and the doctors have said there is nothing else they can do? Your situation may seem impossible to you and to others, but in the eyes of God, that impossibility can become a possibility. Give Jesus a chance and let him set you free. We invite you to come to any of our services where you can receive your miracle or deliverance. What God has done for others, he can do for you too. Our Grace family is supported by viewers like you. Your donation is greatly appreciated. Your financial gift ensures that you and others like you can continue to hear and see what great things God is doing in the lives of others. Welcome back. And Natasha, we want to thank you so much for being on the program today. Thank you for having me today. <laughs> and we know that you traveled all the way from South Africa and you're going to be leaving in a few days. So we're right. going to continue this interview because we know that you have more that you want to share about what yes. the Lord has done in your life. And you want to talk more about how the Holy Ghost has really affected your life in a great way. So we're going to continue this interview. But friend, that means you're going to have to tune in next week to hear part two of this interview. And now at this time, friend, it's prayer time. I'd like to give you this opportunity to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. The greatest miracle of all is the miracle of salvation. Pray with me now and say, Oh God, save my soul. Forgive me for my sins. I have come home to serve you the rest of my life. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you meant that prayer, you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Now come and be with us in the services at Grace Cathedral. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. We would love to hear from you. If you are encouraged or blessed by today's program, let us know. You can email us at ogf at thegracecathedral.org or write to us. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Ernest Angley Ministries.